As the title of the video suggests, if you're looking for a video on how to make pure potassium ampules, I have to disappoint you. In this video I will show you how to make sorta clean potassium ampules. It was my first attempt and as it happens, the first attempt is never perfect. Still, I thought I would let you in on my learning process and show you my failures as well. In order to purify the potassium, which is pretty heavily oxidized, I first needed to make a special glass apparatus. I will not distill the potassium for purification, but use a method I heard about from Professor Kraus. This method is called Zygon. It takes advantage of the property of alkali metal oxides to stick more strongly to a clean glass surface than the pure metal. By slowly pouring the impure alkali metal over a glass surface, one can thus separate the oxides. At least that's the theory. I've never tested it. To make the glass apparatus, I first close off a tube about 40 cm long with a diameter of 3 cm at one end. Then I make a hole a few centimeters below the opening. A short glass tube is then melted to this hole, which allows me to connect my vacuum pump. Then the other end was melted off. A hole blown and an NS14 standard glass ground joint was melted on. An NS29 ground joint would have been better, but NS14 was the only size I had on hand. Certainly sufficient for a first test. The final step was to create another hole below the side neck for the vacuum pump and melt on a thicker, longer glass tube. This is the tube the potassium will flow into and which will be sealed off. Again, I would have liked to use a tube that had a smaller wall thickness, but I didn't have one on hand. But it will do for testing. And with that, the glass apparatus is ready. Now it would actually be time to boil the apparatus from the inside with aqua regia. However, in Germany it is illegal as a private person to own concentrated nitric acid. Don't ask me why. And therefore, not an option. So I rinse the apparatus first with distilled water, then several times with 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol, and lastly three times with distilled water to clean it. The reason I rinsed with distilled water and not with isopropyl alcohol in the last step, even though it would be easier to dry, is that in my experience even 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol leaves residue. These contaminants decompose when exposed to heat, leaving a brownish residue on the glass. The apparatus was then dried completely. And now, let's do the actual purification. The apparatus was connected to the vacuum pump, purged three times with argon, and then baked under vacuum to remove moisture adsorbed to the glass surface. Then the potassium was prepared. Since it was stored in a mineral oil of unknown composition, this must first be removed. For this, I washed it twice with petroleum ether, a very volatile mixture of hydrocarbons that evaporates quickly. While argon was flowing through the apparatus, the potassium pieces were added via the NS14 standard ground joint. And yes, I know it was way too much potassium for the first attempt. I was a little bit too optimistic that everything would work in the first try. After the apparatus was closed again, a vacuum was applied. At that moment I was faced with the question of whether to melt the ampules under vacuum or under argon atmosphere. If they are melted off under vacuum, they cannot be reopened afterwards because the air and thus oxygen and humidity will enter immediately. On the other hand, my argon 4.6 is only 99.96% pure, and I was relatively sure that the residual moisture in the inert gas would partially oxidize the potassium. I currently have no way to properly dry my argon, so I opted to melt off the vials under vacuum. By the way, it looks like I will soon have a real schlenk line, with the ability to dry my gases completely. This will definitely be used in my second video on this topic. After the potassium was put in the apparatus, I again baked it out completely and then carefully heated the potassium until it melted. Here I was very careful to keep the temperature close to the melting point to avoid the potassium evaporating in the vacuum. When the potassium had melted, I noticed that condensation drops of a liquid were visible on the walls. 
This must have been mineral oil, possibly left over in a sealed pocket in the potassium and therefore not removed by the petroleum ether. So I spent the next hour chasing the condensation drops through the apparatus until they were gone completely. The conditions for a nice ampule were already not optimal, but I decided to continue. I heated the apparatus to about 60 degrees Celsius to prevent the potassium from solidifying immediately when it came into contact with the cold walls. And then I put the potassium into the ampule. During pouring, I could already see that it did not work properly. Nevertheless, the potassium inside the glass tube was melted off as an ampule. The result was a vial of potassium that was not terrible, but not satisfactory either. You can definitely see oxidation products on the walls of the ampule. To make some improvements, I wanted to at least try it a second time. For this attempt, I attached a thinner glass tube and I will use a smaller amount of potassium. Before using the potassium, I also added a few drops of isopropyl alcohol to some potassium pieces in petroleum ether to remove the oxide layer. Then, these pieces were again cleaned very thoroughly with petroleum ether and placed in the apparatus. By carefully heating, I melted the potassium and thankfully, this time, no condensation drops were visible. I suspect that in the last run, there was actually some mineral oil in a sealed cavity of the potassium. This time, I made sure to pour the potassium as slowly as possible, to give the oxides enough time to adhere to the glass surface. Here you can see a nice drop of potassium. However, it was not completely pure this time either. You can see the impurities on the surface. After the potassium was filled in the glass tube, it was melted off. By the way, I just wanted to show you the beautiful colors due to some potassium evaporating and condensing on the walls again. It is a sign that the temperature was too high, but at least it's a very pretty mistake. The remaining potassium was put into the leftover tube and also melted off. The resulting ampules were also not as pure as I would have hoped. But for a first try, and considering that I never tried this method before, I think it's acceptable. I am not sure what I'm doing wrong. I suspect that it didn't do a good enough job excluding any moisture and oxygen. Or the potassium I started with was too contaminated to be cleaned up by this method. As soon as I have a proper Schlenklein available, and I will be able to dry the argon, I will test it again and melt off the ampules under argon atmosphere. In addition, I will lengthen the glass tube so that the contaminants have more time to adhere to the glass surface. Maybe I will even purify the ampules a second time using this method to get a satisfactory result. I hope you also enjoy the videos in which I document my failures. I would like to thank my patrons so much for their incredible support. My dream is to eventually be able to rent a space with the money from my patrons that will give me the opportunity to develop with my projects and not be limited by the fact that everything I do has to take place on a small workbench. Thank you a lot for watching.